Hi everybody, happy Friday. It's Diane and it is a dashboard confessional because um, I actually am in the car, Texas. So looking outside, looking at the temperature gauge on my car, it's about 100. Don't know what the humidity is to factor in the heat index, but um, I say it's pretty darn hot. Um, not the hottest it's ever been, but hot enough. Um, finally made it out to get to the post office and I'm driving and to pick up a package and that required a signature and it's like, what time do they close? What time is it? Um, didn't really know my schedule so turned upside down. Um, as you know, I was laid off um, a while back and so my daily schedule is somewhat, um, every day is a little bit different, but not sleeping well. Uh, I think, I don't know how long I laid in bed trying to go to bed. And it wasn't where I was, can't go to sleep because I'm not tired. Um, kind of sleep where you, then you can get up and do something productive like cross stitch, play the ukulele, um, look at quilt books, something like that, write in your journal. Um, morning pages at night because I'm not a real morning page person um, just where you're, you're just trying to go to bed and for some reason my body just wouldn't um, shut down and um, heart kind of racing and I can remember it doing this when I'm under like lots of stress and um, probably because my cur current situation and it happening without me really being prepared for it. So every day is a little bit different. Some days are better than others, just to be really honest with you. Um, but last night was really, it wasn't like I was really upset about anything in particular, but my brain wouldn't shut down. My heart was kind of pounding. And those who are young, you don't know this yet, but as, a woman of a certain age um, get hormone fluctuations and um, at, at my age I'm sure I've gone through menopause so certainly I don't know that that's it but I just felt like I was so hot I mean the room was cool fan was on everything was normal but I just couldn't cool off and um, I resorted to my last ditch effort I had to sit here and think about what it was but um what I found in the past you know you move around on the bed you can't get comfortable feather pillow you keep trying to to find that sweet spot right where if it's just right supporting your neck my neck is somewhat wonky um I've got a tad a bit of scoliosis so my neck kind of curves and um so can't use foam filled pillows that really does not work for me but feather pillows are good so that one work and I'm you know trying different pillows different things and um, it just wasn't gonna work so I did the last resort thing possible other than get up and get something to eat because sometimes that will help me go back to bed opt that option I really didn't want to do uh, it'd have to be really serious um, if y'all haven't noticed uh, <laughs> I don't like to drink anything with calories per se and really don't want to eat in the middle of the night unplanned so um, I did the next best thing I flip-flopped to the end of the bed and I know it sounds crazy but it's worked in the past it's um, it was closer to the, to the box fan that I had going, but that wasn't the reason. There's just something about readjusting differently, angled on the bed differently, um, that I was able to go to bed. So I know I saw the, it was five o'clock, so I, and I was still up. So I'm not real sure exactly when I dropped off, but given the time I went to bed, I got up later. I did stay up last night. Um, to do some activities um, towards a job search and, and get those documented and 
did a little bit of training so you know to be productive and trying to move forward and make some decisions but it's like um, so although you know I went to bed late I got up late I mean there's a couple of days that I've gone to bed late and just gotten a couple hours of sleep and I really can't run like that um, anyway I'm trying to think of when I last um, this necklace is choking me <laughs> um, when I last updated y'all but um, I guess most recently I talked to my daughter um, that lost her husband back in January tragically and unexpectedly and she's um, very good at her job and she's in a important job and that requires a lot of focus um, very people oriented very detail oriented oriented and deadline or oriented <laughs> that's hard to say it's like a tongue twister um, anyway I talked to her and, and and she just you know I don't know what time it was she was finally getting home I know how it is to work long days but she had not eaten lunch and I'm like you can't do that you know and she's like mom I just don't have time there's so much to do um, you know it, it just has to get done and I know that feeling and uh, I think she has folders you know take work home even though she was leaving late at night and still had not eaten and um, anyway it really bothered me so I'm like you know do you want me to call in and have food delivered um, on the daily for you so you have lunch and she's like no 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 mom um, and and just knowing what I went through working really hard you know you can feel like you're really able to do it you're running on adrenaline but it just takes its toll and um, so she didn't like that idea got off the phone and talked to a, a friend and said you know I like to cook occasionally I do cook and I'm a pretty good cook I think um, why don't you make something and you know share it with Jennifer and um, you know everyone likes a home cooked meal so put that idea past her and um, she was all for it you know who doesn't like good yummy food you know prepared and given to you and actually I thought back to when I actually had it was either Robin or Jennifer I had delivered and my mom came over or stayed a night or two at the house and she brought over I think it was some kind of pork chops and I don't know what the other thing was but that was you know I could put in the freezer and then pull it out and I can't tell you what a blessing that was so um, so that I, I knew I was going to do, and secondly, I just said, you know, what if I went and got you to eat frozen dinners? And I know I do. I know how to kind of mix it up and make it kind of like the Sandra Lee version where um, you start off with something, you add some other elements, or you don't use the sauce in that. You use the fettuccine noodles or use Stouffer's fettuccine Alfredo but put some cheddars in it, frozen peas, some tuna, you have tuna casserole, just different things that, you know, at the end of the day when you're just dead tired that you could make it. Um, or, you know, I was gonna make, you know, put my little um, twist to it and then, you know, put it into some containers that she could freeze. Um, she actually did like, um, or will eat some frozen dinners, so she gave me, I jotted down what it was. So my mission was on Sunday that, um, for one, you know, go to the store, pick up some frozen dinners that she could have at the house, um, or take to work. And I can certainly understand where she is, um, when you're, you know, highly tasked on, stressed, um, she, you know, she went from a horrible, tragic, um, death dealing with losing a husband to having to go back to work full throttle and then being um, the maid of honor in her sister's wedding and all the you know pretty much clockwork demands on that and um, you know when that all ends you're left with kind of like when Christmas Day the next day afterwards 
you know, it's been exciting leading up to it. Yeah, there's a lot to do, but when it's over, you're sad. And um, I think that's, from talking to her, I think that's kind of where she's at. Um, and I know, I know how it is to to just be where you you just can't. You know you need to go to the store, you just can't functionally do it. Even though it sounds so easy. Sorry, I'm getting thirsty. Um, so I, I totally understand. So, um, and just where you can't come up with ideas. She's like, Mom, I, I just can't even think of what to pull together. And um, granted, she, she doesn't really like to cook it or has not up to this time because she really didn't have the time. She was like such a um, hardcore, heavy duty um, give. I don't know how many hours she puts in at work. Um, my other daughter, Robin, does cook and Carlos, her new husband, likes to cook. They do it together. I think they have great fun. To me, that's one of the funnest things to do with people um, is, is make dinner, drink a little wine, have a little beer. Um, I think they actually like highballs. Um, which makes me kind of think of the Rat Pack. But um, anyway, so I knew Jen was not somebody who was going to, at this time in her life, deal with, you know, she's just going to truck on. And um, so anyway, she ended up Sunday having to go into work. And I, I, I actually stayed up all early morning. I think, I, I can't remember what time I went to bed. I think it was like 7 in the morning. Uh, but I had made some spaghetti. I made some rice and um, spaghetti with meat sauce. So, and rice to go with um, Atkins uh, chili con carne. I don't eat the whole thing. I just take like a third of it, put it on some rice, um, maybe a little half or a third of the fat cream cheese, you know, kind of melted, um, and maybe a grilled piece of bread, something that. It's really easy, but really good. I do like chili con carne. I like to make it, but this is, if you look at the the um, calories, fat, it's probably not good for one meal, but if you split it up among like three meals, it's not a bad option and it's high in protein. So um, got that down. I did have some frozen dinners that um, I wasn't in need of. So they were, things that she would like um, got those together and then ran over there and ultimately had a really nice time she has two really big dogs you know me I'm a little pug little dog lover and um, she's got a huge Weimaraner who actually weighs more than I do and probably more than Jennifer and um, Charlie who is a bird dog and or a special kind of hunting dog most adorable markings brown head and then um, white with brown spots and like a, her her tip of her tail looks like a paintbrush or like a paintbrush that's been dipped in cream paint um, just adorable high energy um, so we went walking and we took um, Trig his name is Trigger but called Trig he's older and has issues medically so we did one lap with him got him back home where he could be in the cool air conditioning and then we went for another loop a longer loop with Charlie and anyway it was nice to spend just time talking to Jennifer and we ended up we went to the grocery store and um, which is fun I, you know you can make it fun it, it's not my favorite thing to do on my own um, but you know there was some things I needed to pick up and you know I picked up things and said, you know, what about this? What about that? And um, so, I, you know, I think at least she's got the food there if she needs it. And I certainly can continue to make food. I used to do that when the kids were little. Um, it's like on Sunday, make about two major dishes and have them for, you know, during the work week. And enchiladas, lasagna. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, mock turkey and dressing and just those kind of things because it is hard being a, a working 
mom and it's hard working <laughs> let's just say it like it is nowadays it's hard pulling in a, a good living and being able to have a balanced life and be able to do those other things especially if you have no support of anybody else in the house so um, anyway had a great time I got a sweet text from her when she finally had time to eat the spaghetti and it was like mom that's so good and um, I think spaghetti sauce is one of those things that just tastes even better the next day. I think the the seasonings really get, I don't know, just, they just get more flavorful. That's hard to say too, sorry. Um, so anyway, that's how my week started and as you could see my schedule had already started to go crazy. Um, and that's kind of how it's been. and try to get it back to normal on the weekend so I can go out and do fun things. I was able, well actually, um, went to the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. It's a refuge for bison and um, we we're going to meet up with a meetup group and um, it's one of those things you had to be on time. It's not like just come and get there when you want to and go hiking. Um, so I was so worried about being ready, I really didn't sleep that night. So not a good way to start out on a hot day for a hike. Um, ended up there weren't, if any, people that showed up with that group or we didn't see them on the, the pass. There was different ways you could go. Um, and given that for one, somebody's walking by, so I feel really strange. Um, <laughs> anyway, they're thinking, who is this crazy lady? Um, anyway, given I was sick uh, probably three months ago, pretty, pretty, pretty sick, my endurance just isn't there. So I think we made it three miles, and which was probably good for me. And for one, I had forgotten to take any medication, my heart. <laughs> my high blood pressure medicine I didn't take not a good idea um, all in all I was well hydrated I have a camelback you who maybe aren't in the US or don't cycle or hike or you know one of the type of sports where you would use it it's kind of it just comes around like a, like almost like a backpack or a um, life vest um, you know, it clips, you fill it up with, I think mine holds over two liters of water, um, and it has a little hose that comes off, and it has like an on and off switch, so um, definitely that was a lifesaver. I um, would not, you know, if I'd been carrying just a, a, something you would take to the gym, that would not have lasted. Um, what was amazing is you had to they have some like swampy areas and um, I think it's it's like a river but it's by a, a lake and anyway there's alligators so you have to keep your eyes peeled for alligators I mean who would think you know bison maybe but they have them pretty well fenced in and um, yeah, it's like, it had a sign, beware of alligators or whatever. And it's like, holy moly, they're serious. Um, but that was great fun. Um, there was one viewpoint by the main center. We could go in and they had different um, displays. If you're in the, the Fort Worth area, go to it. It's really interesting. But they have a lookout um, where if you walk just a little bit, you can look out and you can just see far down into like a valley and then you can see for miles and you can see a skyline um it's just you know it was really interesting and was able i bought a, a really not expensive walking stick um who knew that you get little um like these medallions medals that you you know nail into you curve it and and Put it on your walking stick to you know as a memory of where you've been and i think a lot of people do that for the national parks um this was not a national park but it was a refuge and um so i thought 
I like to hike so let's go on and get this and um, and it was I, <laughs> took forever picking it out you know I, I just really had to consider what it looked like I'm a very visual person um, and then how it felt in my hand was it rough at the top um, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to some things which is somewhat odd but um, anyway found one and it looked like it was kind of caramel brown a little bit browner than caramel and it had like little areas of white dots um, so of course the name is dotty but um, it reminds me of my mom because she loved giraffes and when you look at it in essence it looks like a giraffe um, anyway it just um, so if all this fails it's something that will remind me of my sweet mom but um, so did that uh, on Saturday hope to be maybe hiking tomorrow um, trying to oh one other just kind of God wink thing uh, for you stitchers at this although this is not cross stitch it's quilting related um, ran into um, Hobby Lobby to uh, buy a couple of um, bits of fabric um, to do a I had that stuff pulled together for a red and white Irish chain quilt and um, didn't have you know the the one of the nine patches is red with the cream or white and the other one in this book it's really faint where you really can't see a difference it's just um, two by two blocks in a nine patch um, and I really didn't have any thing in my stash that would meet that kind of criteria so uh, so in search of them right because you have to have a variety when you're making a scrappy type quilt and ideally you would use your scraps but clearly I haven't had time to do that kind of thing over the past years so um, I just started up a conversation I mean this was like the the microphone you know overhead speakers telling you to get your last purchases and come you know check out um, started talking to a other woman that was there to get a little bit of fabric and all in all she was a quilter um, asked her if she went to the local quilt guild she said no but she got together with a group of um, individuals ladies uh, that come together once a week and bring things to work on and who knew that Joann's would let you kind of um, use their facility in the back and they have a really nice tables to work on you can bring sewing machines you can have a ironing board there iron um, they have um, these cutting pads um, that Olafa you know the rotary cutters that you can use you bring your own rotary cutter but um anyway she invited me to join them so it's just like one of those random things um not only does she quilt but she had she plays a ukulele and i know these ladies thought i was kookaburras but when she said she played the ukulele or something i i just started jumping up and down i'm like you are kidding me and um Anyway, it was just funny. It was like definitely a God wink. So um, that was one blessing that I got this week. And um, the other was spending time with my daughter. And um, oh, I was telling them, I, I was talking about how I'm a fifth generation quilter. And how I, I'm hoping I haven't given up on my daughters to one of them to pick it up. And um, you know it's kind of a dying art and one of the ladies I said uh, I think the lady I'm not gonna say her name that I met uh, originally or first that invited me said oh it's coming back <laughs> and it just reminded me of Jennifer when I said hey guess what I'm what your crazy mom's doing now and I told her um, that I was gonna teach myself to play the ukulele and um, she's like I said it's coming back in style she's like when was it ever in style so it just it was so funny I was just cracking up um, but not only does she play the ukulele 
she has an adorable reissue of a 1961 Shasta camper and it's yellow pale yellow and white and then it has a black and white checkered um, floor inside it had um, something that came out and you would put in front of it kind of like a something to put it on the ground it was black and white check and then it had a black and white awning I mean how stinking cute is that um, anyway she likes to camp and camp many places from what she said and play the ukulele around the campfire I'm like I know like two songs <laughs> All right, um, and she actually told me of somebody else online that um, has some videos to learn from. Um, she actually is a singer, a vocalist, so um, she obviously knows music. I have problems even if I learn the chords. I don't have the the cadence or rhythm, whatever I don't even know what to call it of of the song. So, I mean, she's got a lot going for her. She knows music and. Um, but anyway, it was just so funny, and it was like, wow, kind of like a kindred spirit, so to speak. So, um, I guess, you know, just chat up different people, and who knows who you're going to meet, and the stories and the adventures that they have had, and um, so that was just really fun, just very unexpected. I mean, like, the closing wire of, of Hobby Lobby and we just happened to cross paths so very interesting but um, I'm trying to think of anything other noteworthy um, the one pattern that I told you about that I had ordered a while back um, called Lady of Vladimir um, came and I need to show you the, the front of that but it is impeccable I, I need to um, get that started I'm actually going to use I think they had it on a 18 count Ada and I think what I think I just told y'all that I'm gonna use a larger count on a actually gridded pre gridded canvas so have that and then I saw this kit that I had purchased in the last year or two and it's um, I think it's a dimension quilt I'll have to double check or design maker or I can't really think but you know all the floss and um, it's about all these different coffee drinks, and it's really cute, and I thought that would really be cute to do So um, this is part of my problem. There are so many things that ooh, I love them. I want to do them That I get so Bogged down on choosing which one so I need to just make myself do it um, I did that with the ukulele. I hadn't played it in a while so I'm like just pull it out and play it for a little bit and um you know, after going through, you know, a stressful couple years and um, now trying to, you know, work out financial things, you know, talking to financial planners and um, not getting that twice a month paycheck and just all those worries that go with not having a job any longer. And when you've been working, other, working, full-time or working and going to high school or working and going to college since I was 16 and at Xerox I was there for over 38 years so um, with contract service probably closer to um, not quite 39 years I mean that is a lot of time um, anyway it's just such an upheaval and I'm kind of a if you haven't noticed watch of my other videos um, I have the full gambit of emotions that get displayed on this channel <laughs> that you know from normal everyday chat to memories that I get sad about you know like losing a pet or a family member or just those tragic things um, of course Dylan's passing um, to just hilarious I think they're hilarious um, things that have happened or things that um, I do um, so just kind of the full gambit but I do feel things deeply and um, so I still am dealing with what's going on um, looking for the 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 store shut looking for the next stage of my life then you know what it's going to be um 
hadn't figured it out yet. I did go buy some books. Um, I did go buy some books on, um, I think some of it had the Myers-Briggs assessment in it and that could help you kind of hone in on what you are good at. Um, also interviewing and resume writing. I sit down to write a resume and I think I have PSTD, <laughs> to be honest. I just go blank and um, I can't explain it. And like I was looking at HR type of jobs and it's like, gives me panic attacks. Um, and I'm like, man, this last bit of time being under such stress and um, ultimately what happened, I just feel like <laughs> I've got PSTD and it's frightening. Um, anyway, about to get emotional again, but <sighs> oh, one thing, I'm sitting here in my car, I can show you. Um, I bought, you know, everybody has, I'm kind of on the slow uptake on new technology, but like those Bluetooth speakers, um, Bose, I think, you know, you can get a really good one that's powerful for over $100, and it's like, I just really didn't want to spend that. I found this on Amazon. You know, I buy Amazon, and this is the brand. You know, you just plug it in and charge it up, and um, I'm kind of, my hearing's not great. Um... So I always had to be walking around the house with headphones on, um, listening, you know, I listen to audiobooks all the time and, or YouTube and this speaker, I highly recommend it was like $32 and I think not even taxable in Texas and got here within a couple days and it went over a hundred dollars. It was like $32. It's like when, um, excellent purchase there's not a whole lot of things that I'll jump up 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 and about that didn't come out right but you know what I mean um, but highly recommend it anyway I better get myself upstairs get myself together because I think some friends are getting together and we're gonna go out and I'm not sure what we're gonna do but um, if it's something I can tell you about, I'll share it. If it's really, really good, maybe I can share it. Um, no, I never do anything that's terrible. So, um, anyway, uh, sorry, these aren't more consistent, these videos, and that I don't have my stitching patterns to show you, but I am getting more um, focused on cross stitching and quilting and water using all the watercolors that I have. I find that very therapeutic, very um, like almost like zen-like. Just have many different brands of really nice watercolors and just to sit down and swatches, just make color swatches or watch them mix. And I found this really cool book I have to show y'all. It's, it's a big fat chunky book um, that's about watercolor painting and it shows you different techniques and, and different colors and mixing and just really exciting um so when i feel like i can get it together enough to actively do something other than swatching um i'll share it with you because it, it's really um, fun if any nothing else you know buy like a student grade set of um, watercolors and um just sit down and paint. It, it's really um, very relaxing. If you don't like to meditate, it's almost, um, you know, you kind of just get in a zone. And um, I like colors. I like painting. And um, if you want some recommendations on some student grade type of um, sets you can get, um, there's different companies online that you can get some really great coupons, free shipping. Um, um, Dick Blick, um, Jerry's, I'm trying to think of, Jerry's Artorama, I think. Um, God, there's others. 
I'll think of them. I'll share them with you if you're interested. But you know, I my interest with all things creative kind of runs again. But I am going to hopefully going to get back to artist uh, like artist way and do morning pages. And someone I watched several YouTube's on it. It doesn't necessarily have to be morning. If you're not a morning person, do it at night. It's just a stream of consciousness writing, um, a flow. You don't worry about grammar. You don't worry about jumping topics. Like I jump topics on, on these videos so much, but it's to get it out on paper. And it's for no one to read. And not your children, not your person you're dating or in a relationship with not your parents not anybody it is sacred ground and get it out and it can really help you work through things that are stressing you it can help you focus on goals or, or find your your real truth um, find your what will make you joyful and uh, you know that's really what it's about and I think I've been pretty repetitive on it but I did watch a comeback video of uh, individual and I do watch I'll just say it out here I, you know I was anorexic um, I watch recovery anorexia uh, videos and most of the individuals are very young people they have had it for years gone into in-house treatment many times anyway um, and I have a tendency it's it's a coping skill so um, you know to keep me from going in that danger zone um, you know I, I tried to watch the ones that are recovering and I find it helpful and anyways one individual that was obviously very underweight and consistently got thinner and um, you know really never shared that there was any type of eating issue um, there's so many different type of eating disorders um, anorexia there could be there's something I don't know the technical term where you know you have to offset and this is part of anorexia where you have to offset what you eat with maybe not eating much the next meal the next day or um, exercising it off or you know that there's those that want to eliminate it through you know bulimia ways and I don't want to go into all that but um, and there's binging and purging and just all different kinds of um, issues but anyway going back to where I started with um, one of these individuals finally and I don't know if it was someone on YouTube they were going to take her channel down if because it really was um, kind of disturbing because it really looked like you know active honestly not doing anything no one was intervening and it is true that the person has to be the one to make the decision but she did seek help um, been off of YouTube she had a huge 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 following and um, you know it was her comeback video and I a lot of people have been doing commentaries on whether she really recovered is it a real recovery um, and from what I can tell you just because from I think mine started at age 15 it can lay dormant and it can come back it, it's not something that I think it's like any other um, condition um, mental issue um, it's it's not something that just goes away and you know it's there for a reason um, usually it's there for a coping skill for different different things um, so much more is known about it now um, you'd have to read up on it but um, and different people have different issues and um, so it's really not about the eating believe it or not that's how it manifests or that's what you see but it's really you know the eat a hamburger comment is really not helpful um, but was listening to different commentaries that and they were showing different clips of different things on 
kind of like things that had been shared on YouTube that maybe what had contributed to her her condition going spiraling down and you could see that um, in some of her postings or comments it's like you know people just be kind just be kind to one of us one another it could really make a difference to somebody and that's kind of what I, I I try to do I know I'm not perfect but um, choosing to be kind it, you can't go wrong um, I mean protect your heart and all that but it's like um, that person may really need a little bit of kindness and it may only be a comment a nice comment Anyway, have a great weekend, and I'll try to get back with a more focused video on stitching, but, uh oh, anyway, bye guys.